Oh, that front kick. You need to do that front kick, man. You can feel the tension building. So Takeru's best weapon is his right hand, but his best disguise for that is the left kick. He's got a really good left push kick and an extremely annoying, well, I can only assume it's annoying, left inside low kick. So in this fight against Daniel Puertas, the guy who recently fought against Suplek for the one kickboxing world title, Takeru begins the bout with uh, his left kick. He, he goes up high towards the upper arm of Puertas. Puertas has got the traditional Dutch style like tight tie guard. He's a Spanish fighter, but you know, that's the traditional style of kickboxing. Japanese kickboxing is usually a blend of karate. I think Kyokushin karate with like Western boxing. And Takeru has excellent dexterity in the lead leg. You can see he's using his push kick, his inside low kick and the left runners kick up high towards the shoulder. Now, given that Takeru is considered a forward fighter, he's quite good at luring opponents onto his shots so he'll take these little step steps going backwards to try and bait his opponent to step in and he's looking to set up that right hand all the time everything is essentially a route to the right hand so with Puertas he's kind of chipping away at him picking away kind of pestering him to overcommit with his shot and then Takeru can set him up for that big right hand so he's inside low kicking he's push kicking and then taking these little step offs and this one yeah, that's the finish there. So he uses his left front kick to just fall into a right hand. It's beautiful. It actually falls into a jab cross. His right hand has always got a way of kind of finding the, the back of the ear of his opponents. And that's the, the best way to disorientate someone. You'll see a lot of fighters get knocked out in the mixed martial arts around this side of the head, towards the back of the head. Takeru always seems to find a home for it. As soon as he's got Puertas on the ropes, he, he just comes in for his combinations. He loves going to the body and then finishing with the head. So he's looking to kind of come in and out. Knows Puertas is, is still there, he's still present. So he's taking these little step offs to just kind of draw a shot out, make it miss, and then follow up with the counter. He then leads with the right knee and falls into a cross hook. So he uses that short right hand to set up his big powerful left hook. He gets full rotation into that second punch. Puertas manages to miss his own left hook, throws it a little bit too tight. And yeah, he's clearly rocked by that one. He tries to come with his own overhand right. Takira throws his overhand right, I think, at the same time, kind of bowls it over. So they both kind of miss, but then as he comes up, he comes into the left hook. This is a really common sequence. Go watch uh, Raymond Deckers versus Rand Simpson, which is like a double knockdown. They both go to throw the left overhand right left hook. And as they come up, they, they both connect at the same time. So Puertas now is essentially a uh, lamb to the slaughter. He, Takira's using his lean backs, making him miss, making him fall short, and then he's just going to follow up into his combinations. Sets up with a, a little jab feint. Puertas takes the bait, tries to lead. Takeru pulls back, makes him miss, makes his punches fall short. Straight back in. Everything's a route to that right hand. That right hand's just like money. But he always seems to make the opponent turn onto their side. He's done it several times throughout his career and it's gonna feature again in another one of the knockdowns I'll, I'll show. And he, once he lands it, he just spams it, just like right hand, right hand. And he kind of beats <laughs> beats Puertas to the canvas, just clubs him to the floor with, with right hands and that's the end of the bout. So in this next fight, he's fighting Pech Dam, Pech Kiat Pech, a traditional Thai style fighter. I like the fact that Takeru checked the first kick, he lifted his leg to block it, which should serve as a deterrent to the Thai fighter because it hurts him to throw the shot. Then watch how he goes straight away into a jab over and right. Literally 20 seconds into the bout. Jab leans his head over on that right hand and again he tries to hook it around the side so it, it's dangerous. A little fake then lifting the leg and gets the bait for the uh, inside low kick. Takeru also likes to lean back out the way of kicks. That's one of his go-to defenses, to lean from punches and lean from kicks. So essentially, you kind of like just pestering the lead leg, pestering with the push kick, if you, if you watch the full bout in its entirety. He's quite like non-committal really with a lot of stuff. He throws the, the low kick sharp and snappy, but it's really waiting so he can sucker the fighter onto the big shots. And he, he's going backwards when he lures Petch down forward and then he, he lands that right hand. And then again, he just spams it. It's just right hand, right hand, right hand, right hand, left hook, right hand, right hand. <laughs> and I think Petch Dam using the earmuffs guard trunk cover up and weather the storm but it's quite difficult to do that to Takeru like he's such a, a good swarmer he, he picks his shots he'll go tap tap body body comes back up to the head after that yeah it's really good stuff and in the end he, he knocks Petch them out again I think it's a clubbing clubbing right hand and the tide fighter just can't get back up from it or he rattles that right hand off again it's always towards the side of the head like gets the temple and towards the back of the ear with the shots he doesn't seem to like really be aiming for the chin now in this last one he's fighting another tie like stadium style tie I'd say the tie looks a little bit undersized for the weight class so I don't know if it was like didn't cut any weight for the fight or what. But I like how Takeru, he, he tries to probe an attack and then he just takes a little step off. He's, again, not just a forward buzzsaw fighter that you kind of 
can get lured into seeing him as. Once he gets going, he is very much that, but he, he's clever, he's strategic. He plays that game again, he uses that little lift of the lead leg to get the reaction, to get the check up, and then he, he uses that to set up another left kick. He, he does it all the time. Again, little step off, lean back from the kick. I can't remember how he, he gets his time in, but he uses the front kick really well to just to kind of push him back, but then he steps back after. So he, again, he's trying to make the tie commit to something. He's trying to get the tie to come forward. A lot of these tie fighters, they stand a bit too upright and their, their punches, they, they don't take the head off a center line when they throw punches. So they're kind of suckers for anything that comes over the top and that's Takiru's best weapon. So he's again, he's back in the, the tie up, gets him into the corner with these uh, left inside left low kicks. And then he uses it to set up a spin kick, knowing that the tie can't retreat. So the best way to get out of the way of a spin kick is to retreat backwards. The tie then basically runs at Takiru like, I need to get one back now. You've done a fancy move on me. I'm gonna try and do a big jump in knee to get some like respect back. Takeru then gets him backing up, ties using the long guard but because he can't knee or not knee, because he can't elbow or clinch, it's a bit more difficult to use the tie guard to set anything up. I think Bukal was probably the best of all time in K1 at using that long guard. He'd use it to set up his right hand. So anyway, once again the tie tries to run into to get something going, and boom, Takeru just backs him up onto the right hand. It's absolutely perfect. And again, this is a, a forward pressure fighter known for being Takeru is known for being an aggressive fighter, and it's setting shots up on the back foot he gets the tie to run it onto like a picture perfect right hand once he senses the finish once he's got a tie hurt again it's that overhand clubbing right he throws a jab and dips that overhand and it seems to again come around the back of the, the ear like this so it's not the back of the head it's, it's a legal shot and even if it is illegal there's nothing he can do about it because the opponent's always essentially turn to the side and, and give him that opening give him that shot i think if you hit someone around that area around the side of the head it's really disorientating i've had a lot of fights and i would say i've been caught in the side of the head i've never really been wobbled there but it's something I guess a lot of head kicks land at the top there and one of the Thai trainers I, I trained with Yudetcha his name was he always recommended kicking towards the top of the head I think I've talked about that in another video for any of you like long time watchers so yeah kicking here and like almost skimming off the top of the head he says that's how you really disorientate someone and to Kira, every time he lands that shot it's round the side temple side of the head back of the ear and he gets the knockout pretty much every time he lands it anytime he's landed it with any authority it's, it is money shot it's his honey punch it's root to the overhand right as always thank you for watching the video if you enjoyed it let me know down below in the comments pro striking out i'll catch you later